What is going on guys, MJ2005 Gundam here and today I'm finally going to be reviewing the MSG Gigantic Arms Lucifer's Wing. Now this is going to be divided into three parts, so this is going to be part one where I'm going to be reviewing the Harpy, part two is going to be the Unicorn, and then part three is going to be both of these units combined into one gigantic Bumble Armor. So let's get right into the business shall we? So first of all, it is going to be the Harpy. Now. This thing does look pretty damn nice, and I will admit that the frame on the legs does mean that it doesn't have too much white armor on the bottom, but I have to say, this thing is just a monster when you see it in person, because the wingspan is wider than the Hoshmal, and all the clear blue feather blades, and all that gaps in the armor over here, which are separate pieces, do give it an intimidating appearance. Now, I would admit that it is a pain in the ass to build because these blue blades over here, they are all undergated. Like, at least one piece of it is undergated. So, with you having to build so many of the damn blades, you would be tired immediately. But it does produce a very intimidating result. It doesn't have any stickers. I did paint the eyes in here just because I cannot stand this thing just having plain navy blue eyes so yeah for articulation this thing is just articulated everywhere so you do have a pivoted over here and then you do have a rotation at the gigantic polycap you do kind of have a swivel over here you have a swivel at the top over here and then these separate pieces can move in and out in the polycap and then these could move in and out and up and down and then these parts could rotate over here and then they could move up and down at the base and then they could kind of rotate over here and then these tips do have an articulation over here and then they do have some extra blue blades that could flip out and then every single one of these blades these blades could move on a polycap and then they do swivel in and out the armor is getting in the way so this would be a better representation of what you need to expect and then all of these blades are basically plugged onto the many hard points on the wings so they can rotate over here and they do have the classic swivel and they are actually sharp so be careful when you're handling it. I actually pierce my skin when I'm handling the harpy so do be extra careful. And then all of, all of the blades, no matter the double edge type or the single edge type, they do have a sliding out mechanic. So if you want to do a burst mode, you can. And then the head over here, I kind of mixed up the order, so I'm sorry. They could rotate and then it could go up and down. The visor over here, which basically flips off when it is transformed into the humanoid form. It has an, a point of articulation here. So it has a joint here and has a joint at the back over there. And then it has a joint at the head over there. So pretty much you could put the visor in any position that you want. And then the waist is just a classic swivel over here. It does have a forward crunch. A little bit of a forward crunch. And then there's a lots of articulation on the legs over here. So it does have a kick at the base over here. And then it can go out that far. And then it still has some more articulation over here and some more over here and then some more with a slight kick to the front before it dislodges the sensor and then a bend forward bend over here and then these things the talons can rotate at the base which are not supposed to in this mode and then the top talons can move independently on the hand covers and then the hand itself can have a wrist joint so it can move up and down that was 10 mouthfuls but it explains all the articulation that is on the harpy so yeah you could get this thing into all sorts of weird poses now before transforming this guy into the humanoid form here is a rather rough comparison with an average size gundam well since this guy is sitting down it's going to be an unfair comparison so let me just prop it up like so and you guys would see the difference between the Harpy and an average size 18 meter 1 to 144 scale Gundam. So this thing is definitely a monster when compared to the Gundam over here. Now since we're on the subject of birds, let's compare it with the Angelic Hashmal. I say Angelic because of its namesake but it is just as much as a monster as the Harpy itself. 
Now let me pan the camera back. You can see that the, their width is just on par with each other. But I must say, if it is talking about birds, then the harpy is it takes the cake. So yeah, hash mall, go back on the top shelf where you belong. So now that that's out of the way, let's transform this guy into the humanoid form. Now I will have to have the instruction manual open beside me even though I did this once. Just because I could not memorize every single step to transform this guy from the harpy into the humanoid form. So what you basically want to do is to first of all take off the head. Yeah, the face is a bit of a problem, but I think it's just my end of the stick that causes this thing to just fall off constantly. So there we go. Let's take off the head first. And then we take off the wings from their base joint over here, not the frame joint, just the base joints over here, like so. And I'm gonna do the other one later. And then we would need to take off the waist part. So I recommend you take off the actual waist first. And then you tear this thing off. And then dislodge this. And tear this thing right out of his socket. Actually, correction. You need this frame piece on the waist piece. And this piece could go off to the zip lock. And then finally, what you want to do here is to take off the legs from their base joint as well, not the frame joint, so keep that in mind. So with everything out of the way, I could clearly show you what to do. So first of all, you take the head and then you flip the visor back. And basically tuck it right in here. Now I did forget about these two spine pieces that are gonna be, that should be in the back. That Well, they should be taken off now. They do not have that big of an impact on the look, so it doesn't really matter anyways. And then you bring in the frame over here and then you detach the entire leg frame unit over here, like so. Be careful to not snap any of the pegs, or you could just take out the torso and do so, just for clearance. And then you want to flip the joints up, rotate them like so until the L is facing up. And then you have this to rotate down and then flip the poly cap out. Same thing goes for the other side. And that's it. And then place it on the second slot over here. Like so. And then next up, you want to spin the poly caps that are in here towards the side. And then place the head right back on there. And then now you take the wings. And then you remove every single one of these feathers. That ow, it does actually hurt, so be careful. And I've differentiated the two piles of blades with the double edge style and the single edge style, so that will come into mind later. And then now you take the single edge blades, two of those, and then stick it into the top hole with the blades facing inwards. And then you basically just flip out this thing to become the feet. And then you plug three of the single edge style blades onto the bottom three holes right here. And then take one of the double edge style blades and plug it onto the sole. And then the same goes for the other one. And then, with both legs done, you bring in the arms over here. So you f rotate the wrist towards the side, and then you rotate the entire thing to become the forearm. And now, you either insert one of these spine pieces, or you insert a double-edged blade into the top hole right here. And also one for the bottom hole. So do so for the second one as well. And then you'll have these six single edge blades left over. Put them off to the side. And then recombine the limbs to the main body. So after you recombine the limbs, do not forget about the waist piece. So basically you just stick it up like this. It feels uncomfortable, I know. But here you have the harpy in the humanoid form. And while you're at it, 
close up the thighs if you can, but they kind of split open by themselves, so it really, really doesn't matter. So here we have the heartbeat unit in its humanoid form, and I have to say, I pulled back the camera a little bit just because this thing is too tall for me to fit in the frame with my normal distance. Now, just to give you guys a perspective of how large this thing is, here is the local North American Gundam. So it only measures up to the crotch and up to the waist with the with the missile launcher or cannon up there, I don't know. So judging from that, this thing is an absolute monster. And although the uh, kind of forward facing head, like the neck is kind of bent forward and the bare frame just being exposed out here, it can, does kind of irritate me, the others don't. So for articulation, this guy isn't really that much different from the harpy mode. So the head is more limited because of all this in the back. So it could only kind of swivel and you can kind of cheat your way around it if you lift up the visor. So yep, it, it can kind of go up and down, but it couldn't normally because the hot visor is tucked up in here. The arms, they can rotate over here and it can, they can still utilize the extra joints provided by the frame. Nothing really that different from the feet of the harpy with going out like this, going out. They can bend at the elbow 90 degrees, rotating, knuckle joint, and then the feathers, you do already know about that. Nothing changed at the waist. And then the feet, they could go forwards almost that way, that far. Backwards, not that much because of the tail being in the way, although that I will show off later is an accessory. And go out to the side, almost just a, just I don't know what to call this. And then kind of a rotation here, rotation here, kind of splits the armor. And then you should flip up the blades over here just to give it a joint at the knee because the blades do get in the way very much. And then the feet, they do not have that much articulation. They just do have a rotation at the at the shin. So, yeah, you can utilize that if you want. But, yeah, this thing is, well, pretty poseable if you ask me. My but with the small feet, you're not going to be getting any dynamic posing without it having standing issues. Now, this thing, the tail, I did mention it is an accessory. So, let's take it off. It is not supposed to use it until you combine it with the unicorn to make the mobile armor. But I'm going to show it off here anyways. So you take this and then you extend the blue blades. I'm going to light them down because it's going to end the way. You just extend the blue blades out like so. Combine them together and then the side blades over here are on a double hinge. So they could just flip out like that and collapse together to basically form a buster sword blade. Now you need to bring in the handle because I don't think this is stored anywhere on the body. So yeah, bring in the handle and there you go. There is a buster sword. You could use this with the harpy. So the hands, they basically have this kind of a rectangular hole over here. So you could stick it in and it is very, very, very tight. So this thing will not have any issues wielding the buster sword whatsoever. You could get this guy to pull off decent enough poses with the buster sword. So that is gonna do it for part one of this review, the harpy unit.